Hello everyone, welcome to a Fire Emblem Three Houses breakdown video. We're going to be going over shot by shot uh, the trailer that we just got from the February the 13th, 2019 Nintendo Direct. And we're going to be seeing what we can deduce and going to try to squeeze out as much as we can from this trailer. So let us get into it. Mm. All right, so first we have, uh, I guess you could call this not Tiki. <laughs> um, she is a typical small girl in Fire Emblem, so it only stands to reason that she may possibly end up being a dragon or some half human, half some kind of otherly creature hybrid of some sort, or it could be something completely new. Though if I had to bet, uh, she's probably either a uh, or dragon folk of some kind, or half human, half something or other, or she could be something completely new. Uh, we can only speculate at this time. But there are some hints in this trailer as to who she could be related to. Or, or who she is uh, underneath the surface. And she's waking up. Oh my. She also has pointy ears, so that is another clear indication that she is not completely human. And she's most likely a mannequin. So let's let's keep going. I also like her peppermint uh, hair. We have the logo, three houses, much better than what we got last time. Uh, I'm really digging the ooh the font for three houses itself. All right, uh, we have the shot of the three kingdoms, and as you can see on the outskirts of the map. We also have, uh, it looks to be on the bottom left, an island nation. On the top left, we have a, uh, a, it's hard to call it a continent. Let's call it a country. Uh, it's kind of shaped like Australia a little bit, uh, with mountain ranges to the left, or a uh, mountain range to the right. A country uh, slightly to the right of the Australia looking country but it doesn't have a name on it we have a country that is directly above Fargus we have a country that is directly to the right of the ooh, oh my gosh how do you say that Lys Lester Lester and we have a country that is to the southern a uh, country to the bottom right, uh, probably some island nations that it is uh, in control of next to it. And we have the main continent of Forbin. The continent of Fodland. And we also it's have the main continent of Fodlan. Goddess has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000 year old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of. Pause right here for a second. Um, Fargus in particular has some interesting topography. I'm going to go back to the. I'm going to go back to the Adrestian Empire in a second, but I'm going to go back to the Ar Adrestian Empire in a second, but Fargus in particular has some interesting uh, topography. We have a, mm, it looks to be a city surrounded by, I'm not too sure if some of the lines drawn are rivers or some kind of route, but I'm going to assume that they're rivers since they're coming in and out of the, uh, the, what seems to be the, the water surrounding this continent. And 
there seems to be a lake next to or above the uh, pr province or uh, area city of Rome. And it looks like a really interesting hotspot. I wonder what's going to be over there. And you have some mountain ranges uh, to the north or the, the northwest, it looks like. And we also have the mountain ranges that separate it from the other country. Uh, all the way at the top. And of course the uh, natural border of mountain ranges that separate Fargus from the Leicester uh, Alliance. That separate it from the Leicester Alliance. So we'll, we'll see um, what this is all about. It also seems that it's going off of the, or at least from what I can tell, most of the holy countries in Fire Emblem are usually the northernmost and slightly to the right of most of the maps that I've seen. Um, with the one that's immediately come to, coming to mind is Ralston, or Rostin from FE8. I'm gonna go back to the Adrestian Empire. Uh, there's nothing really much here. It's mostly, it looks like deserts. And uh, probably, I'm not gonna say barren, but empty fields. Uh, plains and areas like that with uh, interestingly a gigantic mountain range kind of separating uh, two halves. There's probably an Eastern uh, Dristian Empire and a Western Dristian Empire or like it's it's like colloquially separated in that regard uh, Not necessarily being ruled by two different people since it's one entire empire and unlike the Alliance which is a group of uh, aligning tribes or, or villages that are uh, getting together to make a single unified government. But I just think that's a really interesting uh, way to, to not thematically, but give it some kind of ge geological reasoning for there to be a, a schism in between the empire. Uh, it's like thematically appropriate and kind of interesting. I'm going to see if it actually played. It would be interesting if that schism kind of plays into the uh, story of what happens to this particular uh, empire or, or country. But we'll see. Uh, there's also a mountain range that's surrounding a river to the bottom right. I think that's going to be a, an interesting place uh, to go for engagements. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a a place where you engage uh, for an enemy account, an enemy encounter, or or of the like. Uh, there's also, uh, I think, the capital cities have the the big symbol next to them. So the capital city, of course, is a city next to the water, as what. Uh, Lots of powerful cities uh, would like to position themselves near large bodies of water. And I guess that's about it. Let's check out the Leicester Alliance. Alright, so the Leicester Alliance, again, a group of people, nobles, that heed no king or emperor rules or any kind of uh, monocratic system of any kind. Um, they just kind of rule in harmony and nothing seems to have uh, disrupted this harmony for however long this alliance has been in existence. It, could, it couldn't be, uh, it couldn't have been for too long, maybe a couple hundred years, maybe even less than that. Uh, who knows? But it is not, it's clearly not as prestigious as the 1000 year old uh, empire of the Aldrian people. Adrestian. It's clearly not as prestigious as the Adrestian Empire. Each country also has its own coat of arms. Uh, if I had to assume something from the Leicester Alliance, on the map you see that there is a moon-shaped symbol, uh, most possibly denoting the capital of the region, which is also very close to the uh, river. Uh, this goes the same for the Fargus, uh, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Most all of the capital cities seem to be very close to the water, which is 
uh, appropriate as most uh, big capital cities and regions such as this would most likely want to be close to large bodies of water for many reasons. Let's see about their... I completely forgot to go over their coat of arms, so let's do that now as well. Uh, the Aldrestian Empire's coat of arms is a double-headed golden eagle with the symbol of uh, the Aldrestian Empire above its head. Uh, I do not know what this could signify or be. It's some kind of... I shouldn't say eagle. It's some kind of raptor or bird of prey in general. Maybe a falcon, maybe. I would have to... I don't know what kind of bird of prey that this is, but if I can find some kind of information, I'll have it up on screen. Uh, but yes, they have a pretty standard uh, shield for their coat of arms, and the insignia of their uh, their insignia of their creature, and the symbol of their patron creature with their symbol in the background. With the colors of red and gold being of particular interest, since they are the most uh, prestigious, red being kind of a solid color for uh, royalty, uh, next to purple, of course. Fargus, uh, having its coat of arms, uh, the base color is uh, darker blue with these two lighter blue. Uh, edgings on the shield. Uh, we also have the symbol of the Kingdom of Fargus below the what appears to be a hippogriff, uh, a soldier riding a hippogriff. Uh, I do not know if the hippogriff is supposed to represent something um, from its classic Greek heritage uh, as a Greek mythological creature. Uh, in my experience, the hippogriff isn't necessarily always uh, associated with holy or divine uh, ideas, ideologies, people. But I don't know, maybe that's it's pointing towards something more interesting. We'll have to find out. And the Leicester Alliance is, you have a picture of a knight's helmet directly in the middle. Uh, the top left is the symbol of the moon with uh, some interesting decals on it. The top right are three symbols going down uh, on a lighter yellow side and on the kind of uh, murky mustard, mustard yellow side, we have another symbol. Uh, probably of uh, one of the houses coat of arms or, or symbols that you would put on top of their coat of arms the bottom right is what seems to be a cloaked figure I can't really make out what it is and on the bottom left we have a person holding what appears to be a an insignia for the Sun possibly or maybe it's an insignia for the uh, a tool that you use to measure the sky in some way. Because the symbol on the top right is clearly a person giving uh, uh, his, pr uh, his, her, its praise to a crown above its head. And the person to the bottom left is holding a sun-shaped symbol, or maybe a device that measures uh, uh, some kind of either astrological or just geological phenomena. Maybe a compass? Uh, I'm not too sure what it could be. But yeah, um, if we have a person measuring... Uh, some kind of supernatural, not supernatural. If we have a person me measuring some kind of astrological phenomenon, and right above him is the moon, then the person, then the symbol of the person giving 
fealty. I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna go with. Then the symbol of the person giving its fealty to that crown could be... I don't really know what that could be, actually. And it also looks like he's surrounded by two other creatures. It looks like they're horses, possibly? This is a really interesting quote of arms, and I think there's a lot to dissect here. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. So the Lester Alliance seem to, seems to just be four groups of people with different uh, coats of arms, maybe even different ideologies, that are all working in harmony. Uh, and this is all superimposed on the fact that it's actually three nations uh, on top of the on top of the monastery that is in the middle. So technically there's four entities working in conjunction with each other, uh, similar to what the Lester Alliance already is. So uh, maybe they learned a lesson in and of themselves when they decided to create their uh, alliance with each other. And I also like how uh, instead of a mountain range separating them from the Ardrinian Empire, uh, there is just a large river with what seems to be a large lake uh, in the middle of the river as well. But on the opposite side of that lake, there's also a, sort of a mountain range as well. So, I think that's it for the map. As far as the names and the places, I don't see any references to any of the other games or other... Uh, 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 provinces that were in the other games. There's probably a couple references there, but I can't see anything uh, off the top of my just uh, at face value. And I, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, lore, right, lore wise. So Once let's get into the next part. War and turmoil. Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. Okay, so you have an avatar, yet again, in this game. We have the male avatar and the female avatar, but this trailer heavily uh, emphasizes the male avatar as being the quote fingers main character, or more preferred of the two genders, or sexes. Um, his design is pretty, uh, I want to say straightforward, almost blandish. But he has uh, some highlights on his armor. So he's wearing black on black on black on gray with blue hair and a kind of pink, pinkish uh, highlights on his chest and uh, the sides of his middling piece of cloth that's coming down on his middle. And then there's a highlight of a gold piece and a blue and gold dagger as well. So, a uh, pretty standard design for a Fire Emblem character in general. I would like to say uh, a note about the graphics in this game. Uh, they need a lot of work. The anti-aliasing on his model in general is extremely noticeable. Uh, Nintendo does not play that when it comes to polish on their, their games, so... I'm pretty sure that delay is for a very, very good reason, because uh, a lot of these models throughout the trailer are looking pretty rough. So uh, I'm, I'm, pre I'm assuming they're working on that as we speak right now. So let's get into the female the avatar. The hero, the Ooh, I'm not feel I'm not digging this uh, female design. Like, what is? Why is her belly button? That's such a weird window for a belly button. Uh, I kind of like the arm guards and how it has a, a little a, a fulcrum for bending her elbow. Uh, so I'm feeling that. I like the 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 necklace, I possibly the emblem that's the gold emblem that's on her chest. She has the same basic design except her collar's white. Uh, with the uh, the black and the grays and grays and grays on gray, and she has some kind of mesh on her legs, 
because it looks like she's wearing shorts and mesh. How interesting of a design this is. Uh, but in the character portrait, she's she looks okay, I guess. All right, let's move on. World needs. You start out as a mercenary traveling with a group led by your father, Geralt. After an unexpected All right, so you start out as a mercenary with your father, who is not Grail. <laughs> And this is clearly not the opening to FE9 in any way, shape, or form. Now, this is clearly a reference to uh, Ike's game, Path of Radiance, uh, with him being a mercenary uh, in his father's band, the Grail Mercenaries. Uh, even with this father's name, just like starting with the G and his extremely close, uh, just and, and all no nomenclature to uh, Grail himself. Uh, as you see, they're walking with a party of eight, with uh, his father having a what looks to be a commander and three just normal soldiers uh, walking next to him. They're all uh, holding spears, or uh, the two of them are holding spears to the left or to the right. Uh, I can only assume that the guy to the left that's kind of hiding his weapon is also holding a spear. Uh, not too sure what weapon the commander dudes, uh, could use or would use. Uh, it doesn't look like he has a weapon in his hand, actually. And in the background, you can see, uh, the main character and the three house representatives walking with you as you guys are making your way to the monastery. Uh, we get our first we'll shot of Garrick Mock Monastery. It's pretty. I just, yeah, I'm into it. I I like the design of this uh this whole area in general. Another shot of people going as you enter the castle. Uh, I don't know which part of the castle this would be at. Uh, but there's nothing of particular note so far. A shot of them looking up at the castle itself, and it just kind of fades to white here. Around that same time, you alone begin to see an And take note of this, uh, you being frozen in place with these kind of, uh, really, really... Uh, you yourself are washed out, but you're highlighted by this glow. Uh, the first glow is green, and the next glow is going to be purple later on in the trailer. And it's just you talking to Sothis, who appears within your mind. Who is a very interesting voice actress. All right, now we get to the monastery and the three houses. Monastery lies at the center of three large territories. It is the home base of the Church of Another Seros, shot of the, castle. the main religion of Fodlan, as well as the Knights. Alright, so the interesting thing to note about uh, the Church of Seros, in particular their patron uh, saint, the woman has the same crest as the little girl that we saw earlier, Sothis. She has the same crest on her forehead as the... Uh, Sothis character we saw earlier, so clearly they are not just tangentially related. Uh, there's probably some r direct correlation uh, to how they either know each other, or are they related uh, by blood, or is it a family line, or is she also a dragon person? Uh, it's hard to say. But they're clearly dragons uh, in this picture, so... We can only assume that she herself is possibly a Manikeet, uh, given that she has wings and is uh, kind of placed directly behind a white dragon that also has wings. And I do like the dichotomy of the bat-like dragon wings flapping downwards and her angel uh, bird-like wings flapping up upwards. That's a really nice uh, contrast right there and the black wings of the other four dragons that are kind of flying around. Um, 
or they could be white, but I'm assuming they're black. It could be the shading of where they are, because they're like under the clouds. But I'm not too sure. I want to. I'm just gonna assume that they're black. Of Saros. Not only does the church serve to maintain order in. Uh, it's her with an assistant, or maybe a cleric, bishop of some kind. Uh, not too sure, but he is clearly uh, someone of importance. Its monastery also houses. To see some of the officers. Uh, we get to see some of the students. We get to see this Those epic monocle guy. Uh, yeah, I like this guy's design a lot. Uh, he's really cool. There, we'll go on to shoulder the uh, we have a uh, interesting looking teacher lady. Uh, I don't know what that costume has anything to do with being in school, but she's wearing it in class, which is fine, I guess. <laughs> uh, clearly, all of the memes about this being uh, a fire emblem. Three house points for Gryffindor. <laughs> Not gone in vain. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm digging this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm digging this aesthetic a lot. This looks straight out of Harry Potter. I'm into this. Uh, also, notice on the backs of the students. Some of the students have this double arrow design going down, and other students have this uh, layered kind of scaly looking design going kind of down their backs. I wonder if that has anything to do with their. Uh, roles or ranks or anything like that. They're all. Some of them are wearing vests that are black with a white shunt, a white t uh, dress shirt underneath. Uh, some of them are just wearing a black uh, overcoat-looking shirt. Um, and uh, a few of the. It only looks like the girls. They're just wearing like white blouses with a dress underneath. So yes, there is clearly a uniform system, uh, but I don't, I can't say if the uniform system uh, means anything more significant than just uh, slight customization with the girls having uh, an, an option and the guys also having another option to wear. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three houses. The Black Eagles is for students from the, uh, the Black Empire, Eagles, if you remember from before, Empire. the insignia of the Adristian Empire is a bird of prey with two heads, but now we just have uh, one black bird of prey representing the the red themed uh, uh, country, which is interesting. I wonder what the significance of having a black uh, spoken word on the red. I wonder what the end, what what the significance of a black spoken word on the red uh, color that you actually see uh, associated with this country has, uh, specifically j just for the school. That's just a really interesting touch. I like it. Future Emperor Edelgard. And you see somebody uh, holding a magic circle or, or a, a magic crest of some kind in the air. Uh, getting their astrologian on, FF14 player. The Blue Lions boast Prince Dimitri. I like the anime the shots of uh, a lot of the leader. students. This house is for students from his. Uh, the Blue Lions, if you remember before. The insignia for the Fargus Empire was the Hippogriff. The Hippogriff is a half eagle, half lion creature. Uh, sort of like a chimera, but it, it's just, it's a more specialized uh, name for that particular type of cre uh, combination of two creatures. Uh, so we have the blue lions, pretty straightforward. Uh, high royal uh, lion, usually associated with high royalty. And their color is colloquially blue. So that's about it. Oh, I didn't even mention uh, Edelgard. Edelgard is the heir of the of all of the Edrestian Empire, which is interesting. Uh, the, like the Edrestian Empire is naturally separated by that mountain range. But again, there's only one ruler. So I wonder if that's going to play a part in how the country is 
uh, how people see each other in general or how people interact with each other or or talk about each other or interact with each other or how the other countries see the Adrestrian Empire uh, as a whole because it could easily be two empires but they choose to be as one so I think that's a pretty interesting uh, thing to take into consideration this the geography that they've laid out and the topography for uh, the map in general is telling a story in and of itself but we'll see if they, they actually follow through with any of this uh, foreshadowing. Uh, Edelgard has a really nice design. Uh, black, red, white with the purple, or I'm sorry, lavender highlights in her eyes and uh, her ribbons in her hair. Uh, I like it. I like the design a lot. Uh, Dimitri, blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, just t atypical t t European looking guy uh, I like his armor though his armor looks really cool especially the shoulder pads or the uh, not the shoulder pads the thing that's re not the thing resting on top the thing that's like it looks kind of like dragon scaly it's like protecting the outer parts of his shoulders that looks really cool the golden deer is for students from the Leicester Alliance their house leader is Claude all right the, the Leicester Alliance we have Cloud and Cloud is looking very Native American-ish, uh, North and South America. Uh, the older Fire Emblem games, we had the Sake tribe for Fire Emblem 6 and 7, and they were clearly uh, Native American inspired. And I think uh, he may be also bar borrowing a lot from uh, that culture in general, especially with the... Uh, with the patron house uh, creature being a golden deer, something that is also associated with uh, Native American tribes and cultures. Uh, golden deer with uh, gigantic antlers. Uh, nothing much to say about that. I can't deride anything from it at face value. Uh, but interesting, interesting design. Uh, earring. I like, I'm, I really dig the, uh, I really dig the Obi-Wan Kenobi slash Anakin Skywalker, uh, single tassel of hair, braided hair that's coming down. Usually representative of someone, a uh, man that is, or a boy that is in training to become a man. Alright, let's move on from here. As a professor, you will lead this Again, you can see the models need a lot of work in this shot. They have a character named Annette, and her face is just all off. There's something really wrong with her mouth. I suggest you go to the uh, YouTube. I'm going to have this in, in a link in the description below, of course. But you should totally go to the Nintendo uh, homepage for this video on YouTube and look at the Fire Emblem Three Houses Nintendo Direct 2013 2019 Nintendo Switch uh, video. Turn up your, if you can, I don't know what your internet's gonna be looking like, uh, but if you can, turn it up to 1280p and just check out these models, or t I'm sorry, uh, 1080p HD, and check out uh, the finer details on this mod on these models, because in this video you, you won't be able to see it because I'm, it's going to be compressed uh, pretty heavily for me to get this up. So uh, please go and look at it for yourself to see what I mean. It's pretty bad, and I'm I'm happy that they're going to take some time off to work on uh, just the things like this. I don't know what they're working on structurally uh, else in the game, but this is pretty obvious. Uh, to even people of the untrained eye. One of these houses Oof, and uh, some pretty strange frame house, drops as well. I'm not a stickler for frame, for frame dropping or having good frames. As long as it's like 60 FPS, I'm not really... Uh, I don't really take too much issue with it. There are many other students to meet, each with their own unique personalities and skills. Uh, yeah, Raphael. That's a really interesting outfit he has got going on, and he needs a bigger shirt. He's about to freaking 
Major Armstrong out that shirt in like half a second. Watch out for this dude. <laughs> I also like the chick that's standing next to him. I like her outfit a lot. Uh, her name is Leone? Leone? No, Leone. Which house nice which shot house? of those three. Dimitri, Cloud, and Edelgard. Alright, get into the meat and potatoes. Sometimes with the Knights of uh, Edelgard talking to you. If you look at the screen, I didn't notice it before in the, the dialogue. I didn't note this before in the dialogue options, but if you look at the bottom right part of the screen where you have the character portrait, you have ZL Log. I'm not too sure what that does, but you have also the you also have the auto advance uh, button that I assume you can click if you don't want to constantly click forwards uh, to have the character speak because this all is voice acted. So if you just want to have this on in the background or just like relax your hands for a little bit, you can just click that and have it play uh, naturally. Also, this is taking place in the entrance hall. Uh, it does not say what day it is, though. That's mm, that's interesting that they won't uh, reveal that little tidbit of information. And gain real All right, first shot of the combat. This is straight out of the 3D Fire Emblem playbook. Everything's looking pretty good so far. Still needs to be touched up by a large margin, as I mentioned before, but I'm going to leave that for now. I've talked about that enough. Including everything from defeating bandits. All right, so right here we have the shot of the squad. We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, eight, <clears throat> nine members of the of your squad. I don't know how far in the game this is, but everyone's like level one and level two. So I, my hard assumption is that this is like the very beginning of the game. Uh, so you get quite a number of units like right off the bat. And they're all of like varying uh, schools of magic and uh, melee ranged combat. So we have to the left, the farthest to the left, we have a sword user. Uh, right next to her is an axe using guy. And then below him to the right is a mage female. And then uh, directly above her, in front of her is a lance-wielding male, and then diagonally to the right, di and then diagonally down to the right is the main character, then above him is the archer who is selected to move forwards, then there is to the uh, diagonally bottom of the archer is a light tome user, which I'm assuming is going to be your healer and may also possibly perform light magic. I'm not too sure if it's going to be offensive and uh, recovery support magic, but we'll see. Uh, directly above her is an axe-wielding female that looks like Edelgard. And uh, diagonally to the right, diagonally down to the right of her is a what seems to be dark tome user? Question mark? Um, or that could be the anima tome, I'm not too sure. Because there's the light tome is just a white book, and the black tome could be dark magic, but it could also be anima magic, and he could have the dark tome. But I'm not too sure. If I had to assume though, I'm gonna take it back. The dark tome that the uh, chick in the bottom left, the bottom left mage, I'm gonna call that dark magic. The white book is clearly white magic, recovery, uh, heal staves, the staves are now just white books now. And uh, the guy with the triangle, the bar, the guy with the white book with the big triangle, and then a rectangle, and then a triangle above, I'm gonna call the anima magic, uh, more or less. It, it seems to be a little bit more dynamic to be just called uh, dark magic. Alright, so Archer. She walks up two squares and one square to the right, right above the axe user. 
And right here, we get to see uh, your actions as a base character. So you have attack, items, trade, and weight. We all know what those do. But uh, two things to note are we have two other actions, arts and gambit, we've never had before. I'm assuming arts are going to be your special moves that you uh, that you could have access to, uh, that you train up in in the schools and of and that are to your class type. And then you have gambit, and gambit is a type of uh, it's kind of vague what it does, but from what I can see, it is a type of uh, it is a type of team attack slash manipulation of formation uh like super move attack or just a a burst mechanic where either the formation or just you being in range of other people uh, may trigger a large scale attack of the units that you have uh, that you don't actually see on your units on the uh, you have your sprites that just appear on the map, and then you have your sprites that appear in battle animations. Uh, the armies that are in your battle animations will come out during a gambit and attack the enemies. Uh, it is unknown whether or not she, uh, the gambits actually are uh, like support based, or you have to be in a certain range, or is it a combination of different weapon types? Or if it's just uh, what I am in favor of, if it's a positional or formation-based uh, maneuver. But we'll have to see what it actually does. Uh, another thing to note is that items in trade do not have the markings of the house of... Adrestrian. Adrestian. Is that item and trade does not have the Adrestrian symbol on it, but attack, arts, gambit, and weight do. I wonder if that's because they are a committed uh, uh, thing that you have to. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. I have no idea why items and trade are do not have the symbol uh, of the Adrestrian Empire. But I just wanted to make special note of that. Uh, probably because attack arts and gambits are attack maneuvers, and weight is also a form of positioning or like active uh, uh, commit committal uh, 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 a commit a committal option you have to do with your unit. And items and trading is kind of passive. I'm not too sure. But yeah. Okay, you go into the attack window. We get some information. Uh, she's wielding two bows, a mini bow and an iron bow. Um, it seems to have 50 usages, uh, 50 charges for you to use it till it's gone. And it has a speed up icon next to it. I don't know what that's about. It's probably a bonus uh, to her, to that stat. Uh, like speed or something like that because it's a feather. I'm gonna assume it's speed related um, It's attack is 15 Its hit is 108 its critical is 6. I do not know what AS could stand for defense is 5 uh, RSL Resolution, I don't know what that could be either uh, res it can't be resistance because there's no L in resistance. Um, avoidance is nine. Oh, I guess AS could be attack speed. So let's just assume that AS is attack speed, defense is five, resolution is resistance. Maybe uh, that would make sense because the, like the theming is that you're in a, a, mo a monarch, uh, a monastery. So resolution. If that's what that means, could be uh, the resistance. And avoidance is nine, so your base dodging power and your range is two. Does that say? I wonder if 
range will say one to two if you were building like a javelin and uh well no it has to say one to two because uh, it looks like archers are going to be a little stuck shooting at just two range not one to two so rip that dream uh, she's level two she is of the Adrestian Empire has that icon uh, right above her noble uh, sprite if uh, her name Bernadetta Bernadetta and the icon of the three triangles that kind of look like a green triforce I have no idea what that's about uh, and you're also on flatland terrain which gives no bonuses but it looks like uh, Ed Edda is standing in a forest patch so that may give her a little bonus um, and let's see what happens next. The stakes in each battle are. Uh, we see that the little reticles that are in front or uh, behind, like they're the, the reticle that's facing behind your unit at all times, uh, whether they're facing board, forwards or backwards, uh, that should be their HP bar. So you have like a general, uh, so you have like a general other way of telling what the HP is. Uh, they're giving us a lot of ways of telling uh, what is what just by like glancing at it. Uh, I'm a player that doesn't, uh, I kind of play by intuition sometimes uh, if I know that I'm not in too much danger after checking like basic stats for most of the enemies on, on screen. And if I'm not too worried, I just kind of like eyeball it and, and see uh, where the numbers uh, take me and that's and not worry too much about calculation and this kind of feeds into that notion of people who are kind of casually just glancing at uh, what's going on on screen without paying too much attention to like the actual hard numbers which I think is a fine uh, choice to make uh, more UI decision more UI choices or more UI more UI presence of what's going on stat wise. Uh, we have Bernadetta, her name, and right above her name, I'm assuming is her weapon ranks or skill ranks, possibly. I do not know what the fire symbol is. Fiery person, a person on fire symbol could stand for. <laughs> Maybe it's to indicate that she's on the attack, offensive attack. Uh, you can also go into combat arts straight from the attack window so you could either click the combat arts to go straight into the combat art or you can press attack and then press ZR or ZL to go into to cycle through another combat art uh, you also have X and Y which also could den uh, denotate just uh, normal attacking with your bow or whatever weapon that you have she has an uh, iron bow um, that guy does not have the green arrow icon next to his portrait, so I do not know, again, what that means. Because I would assume that it would mean that you have a party behind you in the attack animation uh, uh, sequence. But he also has sort of kind of an army uh, in his background. I wonder if it's like just a raw bonus to stats or resolve or something like that. Uh, and she has 10 might, 10 hit, 2 crit, uh, and his class is a thief with an iron axe. So let's see. Uh, also, barely caught this. When she switches to curve shot, her attack range actually goes from just 2 range to 2 to 3 range. So she has the attack range of a bow uh, when she uses this attack. So that is quite interesting indeed. Or this could be an attack that hits. Uh, no, no, it, it can't because it's only single targeting him. Uh, but hmm, what I'm thinking is since he's positioned b behind the other two dudes, and there are these lines that are also. Oh, I can't say. I don't know. Cause I want to say that the green symbol means that you have people in your like squad next to you that you can't see on the uh, world map icon but uh, when she goes to curved shot it doesn't exactly say what it does uh, on the screen you wouldn't really need it to say that but 
Uh, there's no notific there's no indication of what it does. And my idea was that it's kind of like magic where if you attack... Oh no, I'm thinking of something. I'm thinking of a completely different game. Uh, where you can attack one person and the people next to them as well. Uh, similarly, similar to what you can do in, uh, let's say, Final Fantasy Tactics with magic or certain skills. Uh, where if two people were standing in like a T formation, you could hit all of them with a, a magic spell by attacking the dude in the middle. And it would branch out to the dudes that are right next to uh, the guy that you hit in the middle. So I don't know. Uh, I want to assume that this is just an augmentation so that she has access to two to three range, which is a very powerful thing to have this early in the game, if I were to be completely honest. And here we have uh, more UI, have his health, Whether your uh, he can't hit you because he's your two range. Your you have your might, which has went from 10 to 11. Uh, hit and crit are still the same. She goes into her animation and it hits you with uh, 11 points of damage. All right, and then we have this chick. Strategize as the battle progresses to claim victory. Then we have Petra coming right after her, and she's attacking a uh, possibly a mercenary, uh, just guy using iron sword. Um, he has eight might, eighty six crit. And my first mind is that, oh no, they're going to show a unit getting hit in the trailer. It's kind of funny. Uh, but of course, no, she actually has 100% crit rate somehow in 8 might. So this guy is about to get deleted. Rip my man. And critical, uh, she had 8 might and her critical did 24. So criticals are now doing uh, times 3 damage. As usual, sometimes criticals uh, did times two damage, but in this game they do times three, which is nice. All right, more stats, all these stats. Uh, until next level, she got, what is that, 40, she has 48 points left to get to the next level, so she got 62. Uh, so yeah, that's a huge chunk of EXP. Uh, but leveling usually isn't all that too hard in the early game, so yeah, it's pretty decent uh, just for like raw stats. Until professor level, we have sword and the banner marking, which stands for authority. So the sword just stands for sword and the banner marking just stands for authority. And she's quite low, uh, D rank in swords, E rank in banner authority. Uh, class is mastered. Uh, let's assume that she's a mercenary, possibly. Or a Myrmidon, because, my god, 100% crit rate, why? That could just be artificially upped, or upped for the trailer, but... Mm. Uh, and unit battalion level ups. Uh, Empire, Infra Empire Infantry. Infantry. Uh, still has quite a bit to go for that. Uh, here we have Academy. Officer's Academy, where you can do some training, and the layout looks very similar to uh, the arena, with you being able to withdraw or confirm the fight. And then after you start the fight, uh, yeah, this is like literally the arena. Uh, you fighting another guy, and you bet uh, a certain amount of gold, and you get a certain amount of gold if you win. And if you don't want to do it, you can withdraw, and if you do want to go through it, you can confirm. This guy is about to get absolutely destroyed by Ferdinand. Don't do it, Sylvan. Oh, don't do it. Yeah, he's going to get washed. He only has a 73 hit rate, 5 might. Other guy has a 100% hit rate with 8 might. Please, please quit the battle. <laughs> I'm loose. Yeah, that was a terrible decision. Maybe, if, maybe it could have worked out if he doubled, but... Uh, okay, begin lesson plan. So, you have that reticle at the top, green bar, no idea what that does. Uh, the, but the green button, no idea what that does. Uh, tutoring, auto-tutor, group task, set goals, start class. Uh, tutoring and auto-tutor, 
just seems like things, uh, lesson plans you give to your units so that they can learn uh, certain job actions. Group task, maybe you train more than one at the same time. Uh, set goals, I have, I'm assuming that's where you uh, set up what, what, what uh, school it is that they're learning from at the time. So you set the, like, let's say you had, you want them to learn lances. You go to set goal, and I'm assuming that's where you would go to pick lance for their uh, job, uh, profession, or whatever it is that their, their class gives them. And then you tutor them there to boost its EXP. And auto tutor, hmm, I don't, maybe it's a cyclical thing where you don't have to engage as much because I don't know what tutoring actually does uh, we're not really shown what it does besides you do it to uh, improve their abilities in that way group task I'm assuming you uh, either assign them more than one goal or you're training or tutoring more than one uh, student but we'll have to just see how that plays out and then start class is uh, I'm assuming like general lesson plan for all of your units at the same time but not the same as group task i guess uh dorothea dorothea master the study of magic. she is studying and it looks special. like black and anima magic or dark and anima magic and she was also studying light magic or healing uh she, yeah, she has a D in the Anima Magics and an E in the Light Magic. And there's an icon for a uh, hand pointing up and arrows pointing up. No idea what that's for. Uh, but, uh, so her sword is an E plus, but everything else is just a normal E. So I don't really know what that's all about. Hmm. So I'm assuming the lowest grade is an E. And as you can go up by pluses and minuses, question mark, I guess. So you start at E minus, or it's, no, it's just start at E, E plus, D, D plus, so on and so forth. I don't think there's any need for a minus. And Japanese game, S is probably the highest rank, or maybe we can go to double S, maybe triple S, something crazy like that, don't know. Uh, we're gonna, we're, we're most likely gonna stop at this though. Fire game. Okay. Uh, there is a meter next to or above the. You can train one more times. Don't know what that's all about. Could be a happiness meter. How well they're doing with their relationship to you, because you may be stressing them out, giving giving them too much work or something like that. I'm not too sure. Uh, growth goals. Yeah, you see, you got the goal being sword and reason focus, so you can train that, I guess, uh, is what she's going to be training next. And what you already gave her, uh, had already assigned her, was reason, which is probably her anima magic uh, abilities. Base 4, strengths plus 2, exp 6. Uh, she says she appreciates you. And yeah, I, I guess you get skills. Do, you get skills for each uh, school that you choose, or each uh, class. So, uh, it's kind of hard to find the right word. Each subject of study, swords, lances, axes, fighting, reason, etc. You can all, you can learn different abilities from each of these areas of study. So there, she was uh, learning from reason and focus. Uh, I'm assuming the custom focus is what you choose afterwards, which is fine. Or no, the goal name is reason and focus. And then below there, you have custom focus in which you can pick either, either uh, reason or faith. And then from custom focus, you can, yeah, you can choose whether you want to do f just faith or just uh, f uh, focus. Or, I'm sorry, you can choose just reason or just faith. 
which is fine. And her happiness meter bar seems to be completely full, so she's putting in work. Uh, and here you can see that the heal tome is in fact the light magic book. So yeah, that's confirmed that the white book is in fact replacing the staves. Don't know if staves are actually going to come back or not, but uh, that's what we're going to have to replace or stand in for staves for now. And he just healed you. Uh, I'm assuming your avatar is going to be, you can name him whatever you want, so they named him Byleth. <laughs> in this particular playthrough, he healed you by 11. It's not too bad. Uh, we have Casper showing off hand-to-hand -hand combat as a fire emblem first. We have monks as a uh, job class that you can use to body people and destroy them with your fist. Uh, though you're still using uh, weapons, uh, sort of, kind of, uh, using gauntlets to augment your punches, which is fine. Um, he has a might of seven, but you have the times two reticle, and when you get brave weapons, it will be the glorious times four. I wonder if it'll change color, if it'll just be times four. Hmm, that'd be interesting. Uh, his hit is 100, crit is 11. Uh, the church soldier seems to be a mage type. Fire hit 79, might 9. Home, there are and he hits you with the. Through combat experience and study, okay. you can help your have some of the class. Oh, yeah, here you go. Potential. You have the classes, and each class has its own, like, small uh, sprite to go along with it. So you have the mercenary, thief, knight, cavalier, brigand, archer, mage, and priest. And I'm assuming that you can go farther down this list. Because I would. I'm assuming we're missing another magic type class, and we're missing the the new monk class. Uh, maybe we also have access to just spearmen that aren't knights. I'm not too sure. Uh, here we have the exam contents. She wants to ace the brigand exam. Fights with an axe and is exceptionally hardy. Uh, exam skills six C or higher. Required items intermediate seal. And she passed. Potential. Though I don't know the consequences of it. Look at this Dragon Quest XI looking food. Really like any cell shaded RPG of like the last 10 or so years. I'm getting some heavy Tales of Vibes, Tales of Symphonia, Vesperia, and all that. Your students can also interact mm. with each other mm -hmm. at the Academy. But yeah, these models need work. He's asking her a question, or like, asking her. Right. My man's is up here just talking to the chick, and she's just like staring straight ahead. Kind of spooky looking. I'm just gonna look at the NPCs in the background. Just, I'm assuming the teacher is just grubbing out. It's fine. Ooh. Okay, so here we have an interesting shot of the the gambit boost mechanic. And the formation that is used when it is activated is a Y-shaped pose uh, with the Y facing diagonally, le diagonally, diagonally to the left. And it's not clear on who activates it though. And then you're fighting this uh, creature. And you're fighting this creature named the Black Beast. Oh, it's actually the girl who activates it. And all four of them attack at that particular position that they're in, that Y-shaped position. I'm really hoping that formations play a huge role in how you go about uh, planning your attack strategies and whatnot. Attack and defense strategies. Uh, and there's two archers in the back, but they're not really a problem at the moment because they're at full HP. Uh, yeah, and then you activate this Gambit Boost. Uh, hit is 100, Might is 14, Coordinated Gambit is a special move, Black Beast is 45 HP. There you go. Alright, so yeah, this, this one's like the dark purple, time is frozen. Time gets reversed, maybe he saw the futures or the premonition, does he have spider sense? 
I don't know. Spidey sense? I don't know. Uh, Brigand goes... But... Unfortunately for him, swords beat axes, so he gets washed because swords are like way better than axes in every game. And we have Edel Edelgard in the back. And then we have uh then we have Dimitri and Claude coming for the from from the rear. Together again at last. The banner of uh, a Dristrian Empire, or a type of banner. It's not specifically the banner that we saw at the beginning, though. A permutation. Maybe, maybe it's of a particular house. It's also not the banner for the Black uh, Eagle, either, so that's also interesting. Uh, Edelgard is a sword user, maybe a mercenary? I don't know what, what class uh, the classifier is currently. Uh, Dimitri is a lance user. Let's just assume he's a halberdier. And uh, Cloud is an archer. Solid. Uh, which also fits his Native American motif as well. Uh, but yeah, we have Sothis. I believe that's what our name was. Yeah, we have the shot of Sothis again. And if you uh, go back and superimpose, or not superimpose, if you look at the differences, if you go back and look at the other uh, priestess looking lady, she has the same headgear as Sothis. So, maybe they're related? Uh, can't say. Sure. We see a hand crushing some kind of object. I can't really make it out because it's very, very deep inside of his hand. But you can kind of make a guesstimation as to what it is. Oh. Uh, this guy, his eyes are. He has no pupils in an anime that usually means he's dead or knocked out, so I don't really know what's going on with this guy. Uh, sure. Shot of someone's eye freaking out. A uh, clear view sky of a mysterious figure. Maybe a villain, maybe an ally, who knows. Uh, his tassels do also do not really give away uh, who's, who he's allied with. I guess you could say it is Adrestria. I guess you could say that he is a Drestrian because of the red, but really, can't really say. Uh, he could also be the guy that we just saw like, a couple seconds ago, with his eyes, like, with no pupils. Uh, but the, the guy in the other shot had like a fur around his neck, and this guy just has a hood, so I'm pretty sure that's not him. Now uh, we have this witch doctor looking mage, looks freaking awesome. We have this chick, no idea who she is. Maybe a paladin? No idea. Uh, a sword master? Maybe? Uh, we have this shot of whatever contraption this this thing is. Maybe this is the thing that that guy had in his hand and he crushed. Getting some Nausicaa Valley of the Wind vibes from the animation of the... The, the purple jello that's coming out. The crepe jelly. Um... Yeah, and then we have a shot of this uh, chick with the hibiscus flowers and the headgear that looks exactly like Sothis's. And that's about it. That we uh, That's about all I can speculate on there. So they, they have to be related in some way. And then we have this creature that kind of looks like an Aggron uh, Pokemon, which I'm totally into. Then we have something looking at the main character, probably that Aggron, looking through his helmet or the bone-like structure over his face. And that's Fire it. Three houses. We'll the release date, July 26th. 26. And we have the special edition, Seasons of Warfare edition. Comes with the art book, uh, sound selection CD, steelbook, and calendar. Coming out at the tail end of July. Oh, that's it for the analysis for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you... I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I was able to offer something meaningful to this conversation. And uh, I am personally am super excited for Three Houses. Uh, it definitely needs like some polish. Yeah, I can see why they pushed it back. I'm completely okay with this. Nintendo does not play that with their uh, games. They are always uh, polished to a certain standard uh, that they hold themselves to, and I appreciate that immensely 
in the age of all these broken, nonsensical games coming out nowadays. And uh, I guess that's it. My biggest hope for Three Houses is that uh, something I've wanted from Fire Emblem for a long time is a huge expansion on the idea of positioning and formations. So we'll see what, what, what becomes of that, what the Gambit system is all about. And that's it. See you guys later. Peace.